So I know everybody wants me to comment on the whole CM Punk thing, but uh, we're going to get to that in another video. So this night starts off with John Cena coming back. And you can tell that they really thought that the reason why the ratings were so low last week is because of Cena's absence. They try to pull out all the stops. Cena making a bunch of fucking lame jokes. He's talking about fucking nipples on Antonio Cesaro. None of this shit's any, any uh, fun. It's not funny. It's not entertaining. It's just fucking worthless. And shows why John Cena is nothing more than a lame-ass PG motherfucker. This is not the reason why the ratings were so low. The, um, this promo is one of the reasons why the ratings are so low. This type of style of entertainment. No one likes this type of shit. Nobody likes this baby fucking shit. Like uh, Cena talking about nipples. No, it's not working. So basically, he just the same shit. Oh, punk, you said my challenge. Yeah, same shit. That they've been pulling the last couple weeks. You know that that match is going to take place anyway. Stop wasting our time. Then uh, Ryback comes um, down the ramp. And Cena and, and Ryback meet face to face. So they're like hyping for a match that way. That no one wants to see. Then Ryback is now a handicap match. For Primo and Epico. So you see what happened here. Because last week he couldn't lift Tensai. They're giving him guys that weigh 190 a piece, less than 200 pounds. I'm not exaggerating. That that's how much they weigh. I remember Primo being 190, and Epico's got to be around the same weight. So you see, so they're embarrassed. So now they're go, they're bringing him back down to what he's competent working with, guys who are able to sell for him, and make him look good. Because he can't sell on his own and he can't work on his own. So he has to have other guys making him look good. So this time, you know, he does the double future shock and that's the end of the match. Wow, this is, this guy's so great. Oh my god, I'm gonna be a major Ryback fan. I ain't fucking supporting Rytard. So get off my fucking nuts. People uh, getting behind this Goldberg copycat. He's never gonna get over. And I damn well know that those chants, I know it's raw, but they can still filter in audio. How the hell are people all of a sudden getting behind this guy? I don't buy it. Fans are not that stupid. They wouldn't back this fucking moron. This fucking bunch fest of a fucking retard right here. This, uh, it's, it's, it's not, it's artificial. It's not real. WWE's making you think that this guy is over with fake audio so you'll get behind him and start chanting Vimmy more. It's a fucking lame ass chant. JR starts getting behind it. You know JR, a man his age, doesn't really like this feed me more shit. No one would who's a life uh, long fan such as myself and JR. Then we got Bros Clay and R Truth. I figured that maybe R Truth's heel turn was coming, but no. Instead he talks about little Jimmy ha uh, going through puberty. And they all start dancing. <laughs> what the fuck is this shit? The, the ratings are 2.5. And they're going back to this moronic uh, display of ineptitude. Uh, look at this. This is... Who the fuck is writing this? Then McMahon comes down and tells him basically to get out of the ring. And just dance down the, um, the entryway to, to make way for him. He comes down and he says, you know, we've got two grown men dancing. But there's room for that in the WWE. Basically, this is supposed to be the state of WWE address. And basically, he said that nothing needs to change. Uh, everything is okay. And CM Punk just needs to accept John Cena's challenge. Yeah, that's the only... Thanks for being honest, Vince. That's the only thing that's wrong with WWE. Is that we're not getting another John Cena CM Punk match. Because Night of Champions was such an epic match. So Punk comes out. And this segment's okay. I feel like we're not getting an epic uh, segment here, but it was all right. Basically, Punk slaps Vince McMahon. McMahon challenges him to a match later on tonight. Um, you know, I'm all for Vince. I'm a Vince McMahon kind of guy, but uh, I don't know. I didn't feel excited even when they said uh, this match was being announced because I knew that something stupid was going to happen. Uh, so then we get Rey Mysterio and Sin Cara defeating the primetime players. Uh, just a really boring match. Uh, just fast. 
primetime players looking weak. Sin Cara and Rey Mysterio are okay together, but they're not really captivating my interest. I'm not like looking at the screen and saying this is a great tag team. I just I see it as just two guys being thrown together with really not that much chemistry. It's just oh this guy's a high flyer and so is this guy, so let's put them together. Uh, you know I like Sin Cara, Rey Mysterio slowed down considerably, but. I'm not feeling this tag division. As I said, I'm not going to fucking jack off to this tag team division like everybody is here in the YWC. I'm sorry. I'm just not a big fan of tag team wrestling, except for during the Attitude Era. After 2002, I told you, tag team wrestling just went into the shitter. There's nothing to get excited about. So I don't know why everybody else is. Then we get Sheamus defeating Wade Barrett via, uh, via DQ, according to the YWC and... PW Torch and what have you, the, um, the, also the announcers, uh, JR is trying to sell it to us that this was supposedly a great match. No, it wasn't. It was a poorly uh, executed attempt at a stiff match, you know, American Strong style, like trying to get that Stan Hansen type of vibe to it, but it wasn't working. It just seemed very awkward. Uh, Sheamus had a better match with Tensai a couple of months back. Wade Barrett is just a fucking piece of shit. This new stiff gimmick, this stiff penis gimmick, I don't know what the hell it is. Um, you know, he's getting a hard on for fighting. Uh, you know, I'm just not buying it. This new tough guy, Barrett, he's not pulling it off too well. Um, this match was just boring. Tensai comes in and, and attacks Sheamus. Actually, I do want another Tensai Sheamus match because that was actually a good match couple of weeks back um and Big Show comes out he fights off Tensai and Wade Barrett uh Big Show comes and he tosses Sheamus over the top uh I, I was bored <laughs> I was fucking bored here this was just a slow boring match that they were attempting to do something different but it was yeah it was different it was just uh bad more bad than usual then we got Cesaro defeating Tyson Kidd. And this was pretty good for a short match. I'm going to be honest here. As I have said, Tyson Kidd's got zero charisma, but he's got talent. And he looked pretty good against Cesaro. Nice little sequences, but, you know, it was only three minutes long. So, you know, uh, I, I would have liked to see this go as long as Sheamus and Barrett. That would have been a more entertaining match. But once again, you know, Tyson Kidd's not really going to get the crowd into it. He's got to develop some type of character or something or else no one's going to give a shit even if it's a good match and that's not going to equal a push for Kid. I want Kid to be pushed that would be nice but he's got to get better on the mic he's got to have a cool persona or else no one's going to buy it um, so I'm trying to you know get along with the YWC there hey see buddy I'm saying good things about Tyson Kid. oh well, you're going to still give me a bad uh <laughs> A bad review on my review anyway. Make nasty comments. Get the fuck out of here. See, that's what I think of the YWC. And we got Daniel Bryan and Kane defeating Ziggler and Alberto Del Rio. Holy shit, this was a boring ass match. Now, you would think if you read PW Torch that this was an exciting match. Ooh, this was a great tag match. No, it fucking wasn't. It was exactly what I talked about in my tag team wrestling video. And how much tag team wrestling sucks. Rock and Roll Express the whole fucking way. I thought I was in uh, uh, early 80s NWA here. With the fucking boring ass beat down from Ziggler and Alberto Del Rio. You know, just rest holds and stomping. <laughs> Fake looking stomps. This is not exciting tag team wrestling. Daniel Bryan is so fucking awesome. He tries to make it a good match, but... You know, the layout for the match is not there. It's impossible to have a good match when you go by this very specific fake-looking formula. Daniel Bryan's got to be able to break out, you know, have a good match like he did with Punk at uh, Money in the Bank where it doesn't look as scripted and choreographed as this fucking bullshit, horrible fucking match. Kane pins Ziggler, making him look more pathetic. Yeah, you're the money in the bank winner. And there you go, getting pinned again. Great booking, WWE. So when it comes time for Ziggler to cash in, he's going to look like a great champion. <laughs> no, he's not. Stupid. Fucking dumbass booking. Fucking dumbass match. Fucking shitty-ass match. Fucking shitty-ass 
uh, Money in the Bank holder, who's actually a good wrestler, but they're making him look shitty. Then we got JR. He goes to the back to talk to McMahon. Says that he shouldn't have challenged Punk. Yeah, this this is really realistic, guys. J uh, Vince McMahon, who has tortured JR, uh, JR his whole life, fired him three fucking times since he's been with the WWE because he had strokes and Bell's palsy and he fired him for that shit. And then on, on on live television, he made fun of him just a couple of months back about his bell his Bell's palsy when, when he was in the room with Hornswoggle. You remember that? You remember that shit? When he went, my God, my God, you know, remember that shit right there? So yeah, so really, so JR is gonna now be best friends with Vince McMahon and be concerned for his well being. I'm not buying it. Holy shit, does this look phony as fuck. Who in the world thought this was a good idea? And then Vince McMahon just makes JR look like a retard. He, you know, he says he doesn't want to wait for the match. He wants him to just say uh, say his name, you know, with the, the way how he would call a Stone Cold match. Just making him look foolish like, like a stooge, you know. Uh, I like JR. He might say nasty things about the fans, but I, I'm a JR fan. And I don't like seeing him reduced to, like, a, a fucking groveling little pathetic uh, bitch here. <sighs> then you got uh, The Miz and Larry King. And holy shit, was this a lame-ass skit. I thought it was funny how Miz made a few cracks at Larry King. But Larry King just not knowing what to do here. He calls out Kofi Kingston. Kofi Kingston is as lame as it gets. He says he had a busy day. Oh, really? He had a busy day? Busy day, huh? Yo, you don't even have a fucking match on Raw. <laughs> oh, you had a busy time on in your big, giant, uh, your big epic superstars match, Kofi. Oh, okay now. Big, big time player here. <sighs> you know, uh, this was just as lame as it fucking gets. Uh, uh, Larry King's uh, wife who's just, you know, taking him for a ride because of his money splashes. Uh, Miz in the face with water. Then Kofi and Miz just bow it out. Yeah, what a fucking waste. We could have had build up for this match without having to put Larry King in there. How random. No crowd reaction at all. Just fucking lame. No surprises there to get in at 2.5. Then we got the Road Scholars uh, defeating Santino and Ryder. Piece of shit match. Santino and Ryder, could they look any more like pathetic nerds? Road Scholars, I don't see how we're supposed to get interested in this tag team. We're not even seeing any great tag team action or chemistry here. All these fucking tag team tournament matches have sucked fucking cock. And I don't care how much people are getting fucking boners and jacking off to this tag team wrestling. I see it all, all over uh, YouTube here. People are getting so excited for tag team wrestling coming back. I ain't excited at all. I'm fucking bored to tears here. Then at the end, I'm changing my opinion about this this uh the Heat Slater stable. Um, I love Slater, but the way how he beat them down after the match, he beats down Santino and, and, and Ryder, and then Jinder Mahal and Drew McIntyre. He does the air guitar, and then they're all dancing. It looked fucking stupid, weird. They looked all lame. They didn't look tough. They're just coming out of nowhere, picking up the scraps. Why? Why are they going at the Santino, a jobber? Why are they fucking dancing around? They could have been a cool group or something. Coming and smack everybody with chairs, but this was lame. This was as lame as it gets. This is not getting over with the crowd. This is not going to be some exciting stable. It's just a fucking jobber group. As I said, massive charisma from Slater, but... Terrible fucking uh, faction that's brewing here. I don't like where this is going at all. Uh, then you got Eve uh, defeating Caitlyn in a boring ass match. This is just lame. A lot of people here in the YWC like to lie and say Caitlyn's a good wrestler. She's not. <laughs> just really stupid looking. And the finish looked really fake with that leg lock. Uh, I know I said that Eve should bring out her MMA side, but this is not what I had in mind. This boring rest hold that finishes the match. Um, the, Layla comes in to break it up. No one cares. No crowd reaction. No fucking anything. Then we, we top off the night with the Punk-McMahon match. It's not really much of a match. 
I don't even think the ref was in there. This fight wasn't cool or anything. It was just kind of lame. Uh, the kendo stick comes out, but it just it didn't look good. It did. I wasn't excited for this match at all. Um, Punk escapes into the crowd because uh, Ryback comes out. He's got him up in the future shot again. They're still going with this push for the eventual Punk Ryback match. They're so fucking pathetic that they don't get it that people don't like Ryback. They realize that he's just an artificial creation by the WWE. They're using him to brainwash the fans into thinking the product is actually good. With this Goldberg ripoff that can't even fucking lace Goldberg's boots. Couldn't even lace one of those boots. He couldn't even fucking open a door properly. Can't even fucking eat properly. Can't even fucking wipe his own ass. Ryback, just like, you know, Primo and Epico selling for him. Ryback doesn't even know how to wipe his own ass. Does he need to have Primo and Epico wipe his ass for him? I mean, God, is there anything that Ryback could do on his own besides eat? No, that's the only thing he could do. And he can't, like I said, he can't even operate utensils properly. Fucking pathetic ass little bitch here. Uh, this ends, the night ends, uh... Vince McMahon says that he's got to choose between Ryback and Cena next week. This was as boring as it gets, folks. Not even Vince McMahon could save this show. And you know what the funny thing was about that Vince McMahon promo? Nothing fucking changed. You didn't get a sense of change. After coming off a Raw that was so horrible that got a 2.5, we got a Raw that was probably even worse tonight. Um... That Vince McMahon promo, though, it, you know, was good because of the acting. Um, and it had, like, two strong personalities in it. It didn't fucking matter because no, nothing epic happened. No, no epic turnout or anything. It was basically just about the Cena Punk match. You know, basically what I got from it is that Vince McMahon said that everything is fine with the WWE. Brodus Clay is fine. Uh, you know, this fucking lame ass tag team shit they've been doing lately that's fine it's okay to be like the nwa in the 80s and have these retarded ass slow boring matches that's fine that's okay you know we're doing fine we don't have a 2.5 we don't have fans filing out one by one you know that like like there's no tomorrow no that that's not going on that this WWE's fine. It's the best it's been in years. That's how Vince McMahon feels it is. Yeah, you know, it doesn't matter that everybody's fucking complaining and saying how she is. No, it's fine. It's good. It's perfect. It doesn't need any improvements. The only thing that needs to take place for it to be better is another Cena punk match. That's the only thing that WWE needs to do to improve. How fucking clueless can you get? Punk said in his promo that Vince McMahon is clueless and he couldn't be any further from the truth. He is fucking clueless. A Senate seat is more important than the fucking billion dollar empire that you built. That makes perfect sense. This was a shitty ass episode of Raw. And my punk video about him punching a fan is coming up soon. So stay tuned for that, alright? Yeah, fuck Raw.